What's up YouTube? I'm Joe. You're watching my channel Ink and Iron and I am back with another multi-tool review. This is going to be a full review. I know I haven't shown this tool on the channel yet but this is the SOG or SOG, the Power Pint. This is their uh, smallest pliers based multi-tool I believe. It does have the uh, proprietary geared mechanism for double leverage at the uh, cutting jaws here and the gripping jaws up here on the plier head. It is a very handy little tool and it does come with a pocket clip standard which I'm a big fan of. You all know I don't really like sheaths. So anyway let's uh, get straight into it here. Oh as you can see at the top and I always forget to mention this on SOG's tools there is a bit holder up here. Now this isn't you know the best screwdriver you can see the handles are splayed a little bit compared to fully closed position this does allow you to put some actual force on it and keep the bit in place but as you can see I'm kind of fully fisting this uh, tool here so it's it's not you know the best for um, all day work it, it's very handy in a pinch and I have used it and I believe it works with these ball yeah these ball detent bits as well you can use it for those too of course you will have to carry separate bits in order to uh, use that function uh, this tool is a little bit like uh, a balisong in some ways like in in terms of its action because you can just free swing these handles I'll uh, pan out here for a second show you had to take the wider view for this one there you go you can see you can like flip it open and closed. Mine is pretty well broken in, although it's a bit easier when I'm not working around a camera. I think you can see the action is pretty, pretty smooth. Not perfect, still not completely broken in, and it definitely took a few weeks to get to this point. A lot of, uh, you know, doing this, making sure that all these pivot mechanisms were uh, smooth. I'll talk about that in a bit. Let's get to plier heads here. See they're stamped SOG or SOG, you know, you call them whatever you want. They got bought out by a bigger company, so you know, they're not exactly in control of, of things anymore. The tips are not the most precise. I don't believe that this gap here between the plier tips was this big. I think I definitely contributed to that. Hard using it a little bit, gripping on to uh, router bits, which are hardened steel. You can see I've, I've smoothed some of the teeth a little bit on this fine area. Uh, definitely in this, you know, bulky, bulky gripping area here. Uh, I have used the wire cutters a little bit, but uh, I don't do a whole lot of heavy wire cutting. It does appear to be a hard wire notch a little bit down in here. The plier pivots being geared here gives you a leverage advantage. So you get about twice as much force at the jaws as you are putting onto the handles because of this gearing here. Don't ask me exactly how it works, I'm not a physicist, but uh, it is definitely easier to cut wires and small nails and little bits of metal with these as compared to something like uh, your Leatherman Juice or you know other more standard pair of uh, folding pliers. This is the locking mechanism on the back side. Also, we have a ruler. I don't know if you can see it. So inches on one side, centimeters on the other. And I haven't actually compared this to, I have like a mini Stanley tape here. Should be about six inches, about six and a quarter inches long. That's uh, maybe about 160 millimeters, 16 centimeters. Yeah, just about that. Okay. So there you go, fairly compact little tool. All the tools are accessible with the pliers closed. That is a feature I enjoy quite a bit. Here's the knife blade. I might as well talk about it. I have resharpened it, as you can see by my kind of inconsistent looking edge finish. Still working through that factory bevel. It came pretty sharp. It was shaving a little bit. Now it shaves uh, better, you know, got some, got some hair on there gross I know we are paper slicing no problem very easy to resharpen because it's just that straight 
clean edge. You know, basically whatever sharpening method you have should work just fine with this. Full flat grind, a little bit of a worn cliff at the tip. Very, very useful, very good for poking and slicing. Yeah, all around good utility. In order to unlock the tools, you have to splay the handles a little bit and push this. See that? See how it rocks out? That disengages the tool and closes them. All of the external tools here lock out, which is another thing I really like about this tool and why I've been carrying it so much. Uh, likewise, I have a sheep's foot serrated blade. I'm not a huge serrated blade user, but you know, this one is uh, pretty dang sharp. So when I'm cutting fibrous material, this does come in handy. Unfortunately, fibrous material is not something I cut very often. Let's move on here. These tools are a little bit crowded. Like I have fingernails to get them out. Luckily they clump a bit, but you gotta be careful, especially on this side, because a lot of these tools are pokey. <laughs> here we go, close the knife around this. This is a very pokey tool. This is the awl. Uh, yeah, I've got some drywall dust on it because it's absolutely fantastic for starting holes in drywall. Uh, it does have a sewing eye, I guess. This is kind of a nail nick. This is kind of a sewing eye. Um, haven't stitched with it. Couldn't penetrate very far if you were going to do that. Uh, I'm not really going to do that. This is just a really good hole starter as far as I'm concerned. You know, poke it into some wood and ream it out there and get going, drive your screws and, and get on with your day. Uh, could be a very adept scraper tool, but uh, haven't had a chance to scrape anything with it, but mostly hanging stuff up in drywall. This, whoa, careful there, knife blade. This is a very small flathead screwdriver. It's not hollow ground, so it's not absolutely perfect as far as screwdrivers go, but it is very handy. Uh, one thing I found this is good for adjusting is, um, what do you call them? Calipers. I work at a laboratory, again, and uh, we use calipers to measure things very often, and they have these little tiny screws on the back side that you can adjust it with, and this fits perfectly in that. It seems a little bit bigger than uh, any eyeglass screwdriver that I've seen, so I couldn't tell you personally if it works for that. I think it's pretty close in size to what you need, but uh, you're going to have to get that information from somebody with more experience. Uh, this is kind of the least useful tool on this side. Kind of a scraper edge here. This is like, you know, some people call this a gut hook. Um, some people use it for cordage. It's not, it's not the sharpest thing. Like it's pretty sharp, but it's, it's kind of raggedy. Um, if you have a need of cutting, you know, twine all day or something like that, this could be pretty handy. Uh, but like I said, I don't cut a lot of fibrous material, so I haven't really gotten to use this tool to its utmost. I think really the scraper edge is going to be probably what I use it for the most in my personal use case. Finally, on this side, we have the file. This is a tool I want to point something out about. So we have a single cut pattern on this side. We have a double cut on this side. They are pretty well formed. A little bit of a nail nick up here, which makes this sort of mysterious. I'm not sure why you would just put a hole in a file for no particular reason, but you know, I don't design these things. It does have a third side, so you could feasibly cut through, you know, small nails or you know, an odd metal trimming job here and there. Not very heavy duty though. However, can you see the backside here? Do you see how toothy that is? The metal is actually deformed outwards away from the, from the spine of the tool here. I need to file that off, but that, that's a little bit of fit and finish detail I wanted to point out on this review. Um, this is kind of what you get with SOG. I have had the Power Access Deluxe two times two times and um the first time like my blade totally failed and so i got a new one and the fit and finish just didn't really speak to me it wasn't great for especially for the price it was like around 65 bucks or something straight from sog so 
that wasn't fantastic. The PowerPoint, PowerPoint, PowerPoint though, seems to be at the right size, like form factor for their fit and finish habits. Like it feels really tight. Everything locks up solid. Really that file is the only fit and finish issue that I've really been able to complain about. Other than that, it's broken in really lovely. The finish is holding up pretty well, except for on the clip, but I'm, you know, rubbing against table saws and band saws and, you know, other stuff with cast iron. So, you know, I'm not exactly being friendly to it. Uh, there is a, what appears to be like a wire crimper here. I don't really crimp wire. So yeah, if you're wondering how that performs, ask somebody else. Oh, by the way, the bit holder on the backside, remember I showed you earlier, it has a magnetic retention, but the magnet's gonna get gummed up with stuff over time. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, if you were hoping that it, you know, holds onto the bit solidly, even when you're not putting pressure on it, it does. It does not shake out. So that is, that is a handy feature. All right, I've talked about the serrated blade already. Oh boy. This is probably the most useless tool on this side, the can opener. It is the same design as the Power Access Deluxe, which is a garbage can opener. If you're wondering how I know that, go check out my can opener roundup, multi-tool can opener video. Um, yeah, not very sharp. This end is going to interrupt the cut. And then for whatever godforsaken reason, they took off some of this tooth, which is meant to hold it onto the can so it's easier to slip off. Um, it, will it work? Sure. Yeah, it'll work. Will you have a great time using it? No, no, you won't. A Victorinox can opener will blow this out of the water all day, every day. You can see the tools are a little bit hard to access, but it's not so bad. Uh, this is a very handy little Phillips number one driver. Uh, it is full dimensioned. If I can get this to focus on it, there you go. Uh, you know, maybe not quite fully dimensioned, but it's better than uh, a lot of Leatherman's two-dimensional Phillips. I have used this on Phillips two head uh, screws, and it does work in a pinch. So yeah, pretty handy to have. Very nice stout shank on here, although not very long. Could definitely have done with a longer one, you know, maybe swap it out with this tool over here, you know, the can opener and, and make it a little longer. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm glad to have the Phillips on there, regardless. And, come on. This may be the one thing I haven't used for anything. It's a bottle opener. And uh, I assume it opens bottles, but I don't think I've actually tried it yet. So, you know, do with that information what you will. I also have a bottle opener video if you're interested in that. It's kind of goofy. All right, and the final tool on here, a little pair of scissors. Not the most comfortable things to use. Very, you know, kind of tapers off here at the end. There's no pad for your thumb. So using them all day, definitely uh, not going to be a fun time. The spring looks pretty robust. I'm not too worried about that breaking, so that's good. Pivot seems smooth. They are slightly curved jaws, so they maintain contact the whole time. And let's bring back our trusty piece of paper. So it works. Can you hear that little click at the end of the cut? Right there, click. Um, that does not feel amazing. I think it's just the tips of these scissors bypassing each other. But it cuts the full length of the scissor blade. It cannot be spread open for sharpening because of this robust spring, so keep that in mind. As sharp as it comes is about as sharp as it's going to get, unless you have some really fine uh, sharpening kit to get in there. All right, and I think that's about it as far as the details go. This clip, very robust, uh, a little bit sharp at the end. You see that? It's like, could use a little bit more wear on it. Uh, it is very strong, has not sprung out on me yet, has not snagged on other things because it's not a huge length on here, so that's good. Um, let's go ahead and get a weight on it and then we'll do some size comparisons and we'll wrap this up. The weight of the SOG Power Pint in grams is 119.55 and in ounces, 4.217 ounces. 
pretty reasonable to carry. So let's flip this open, get a little size comparison here. So at first I thought this was going to be a really small tool, sort of like the Gerber dime, and I have reviewed this on the channel if you're interested. But as we can see side by side here, yeah, not, not so much. It's a little bit of a bigger tool. Uh, next up we have uh, next tool. I forget what this is called, the mini flagship or something. Also a very small tool. In fact, the Gerber and the little next tool here are probably more similar in size than uh, you know most of the tools that I have. I think the best size comparison, oops, excuse me, is going to be the Leatherman Juice, surprisingly. The Juice obviously is uh, packing a lot more girth. It's got a lot I don't think it has more tools. I think they have, um, you know, I don't know the tool count on this off the top of my head. Uh, probably similar tool counts. But in terms of carry, I definitely like the SOG Power, po Power Pint. My God. Power Pint. <laughs> more. I'm sorry, I keep calling it PowerPoint. The juice is just a little bit uh, chonky for what it is. Uh, the corkscrew, not particularly handy. Uh, I do prefer the uh, file and the serrated blade on this, uh, and the scissors for that matter. These are some humongous scissors with nice radius corners. Um, none of these tools lock though, so having all the tools lock on the SOG is pretty cool. I'm a, I'm a fan. Uh, what else can I say about this? I don't know. I've been carrying it for several months now, and it has been quite enjoyable. It's it's even sort of fidgety if you just kind of sit here and work it back and forth. This is what I was doing in order to break in the pivot. And uh, yeah, it's a good time. It's nice to use. doesn't take up too much space in the pocket. Really, my only complaint, my biggest complaint is that sharp little metal deformity on the end of the file and like I said I'm going to uh, take probably a diamond file and just wear that down because you can even feel it when it's closed like that is that is abrasive can I scratch my thumbnail with it yeah yeah you can so yeah a little bit snaggy on that but in terms of SOG's tools um, this may be the best one. I haven't tried the power leader. Let me know if I should down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you want to see more multi-tool stuff, like, sub, do the things, and I will catch you on the next video. Oh, by the way, price point of this is like $50 at the most. Don't pay more than $50 for this. Uh, I think I've seen it at most around like $55 on the internet. So yeah, try to get it for around $50 for paying more than that. You're overpaying. All right. I've been Joe. You've been watching Ink and Iron. Catch you on the next one. Bye.